Well, hello again from Carrollton, Texas. This is Cruise Man coming to you live from the Goldwing. I say live, I'm recording this on my GoPro. And once again, I hope it's working. Uh, if the audio is working, then uh, I owe some gratitude to Memphis Mike, who kind of encouraged me to do a hard reset on this Cena 20S headset. Most of you have been following my vlogs know I've been struggling with the audio on this uh, GoPro backpack for some time. And they even sent me a new one thinking it was something wrong with the audio pack, but as it turns out, I think it was the Cena 20S headset. So now what I do is before I go on a ride where I'm gonna motor vlog, I just go ahead and do a hard reset every time. And hopefully that'll clear up any issues. It's pretty easy to do. You just stick a safety pin or some kind of pin in the back of the unit and, and it pretty much does a, some sort of a reset. Anyway, this was a kind of an interesting week. I'm actually on my way back to Fort Worth. My uh, girlfriend's mother broke her hip and I'm, I've been going over there and helping out trying to kind of get the house fixed up with handrails and things so that when she comes home, she can get around a little easier. So this is the second time this week I've been riding the bike over to Fort Worth. It's about a 45, 50 mile ride and uh, had a special treat earlier in the week when I was over in Fort Worth when um, Chris Caliente sent me a text saying that he was in town. He was in Fort Worth staying over at uh, Best Western off of I-20. As it turns out, he was only about 10 minutes, 15 minutes from my girlfriend's mother's house. So I was able to ride over there a couple days ago and meet Chris in person. And that was a real treat. Um, for those of you that follow his blog, you know he does a lot of motor vlogging on his YouTube channel. So make sure you check out Chris Caliente if you haven't done so already. I tell you, I was pretty impressed with uh, Chris's setup. Now he's got the previous version, Goldwing. I think it's a I think it's a 2016, I'm not sure, but beautiful red, candy red color. And man, I'm telling you, he's got it tricked out. I, don't, I think he's got every gadget and device and electronic piece of equipment you could put on a Goldwing. He's got all the LEDs and the Cree lights and the, got his cell phone mounted right here where he can see what's going on, use his GPS on his phone, I guess, if he wants to. He's got three GoPro cameras hooked up. So he's seriously into this motor vlogging. I guess I'm going to have to step up my game if I'm going to compete with Chris. He's the real deal when it comes to motor vlogs. But seems like a great guy. Hopefully a, a new friendship. And I told him I'm gonna have to come out to Memphis to see him next. Now, on this ride today, I'm also trying out for the second time the Chris Caliente cushion. Here with Chris Caliente and we're getting ready to ride back to his hotel and I'm trying out the Caliente cushion here. I'm gonna try it out on this 2018, see how it does the seat cushion. I know he sold a lot of these to his buddies on uh, YouTube and Facebook, but I may be the first person to test it out on a 2018. And the good news is it fits. It does fit the seat. Actually fits it really well. And I got to tell you, if you're looking for an inexpensive way to really add some comfort to your ride the caliente seat cushion is a is a good one i've tried a lot of them and i'd say it's as good or be, it's better than most and as good as any i've tried and better than most and certainly at that price i think it's a great deal so you might want to check out his website and uh because i tell you what this 2018 seat 
needs all the help it can get. And I can see where using this cushion, I might be able to ride an extra hour or two a day on a long trip. But he and I rode a little bit on the highway, went to lunch. Uh, uh, hanging out with Cruise Man. The honor's all mine. Yeah. Chris Caliente. Yeah. Cruise Man was on my, my number one list and uh, Donald Trump is on my number two list. So you you so you outranked Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a big honor. Yeah, so man, I, he's on my list too. Yeah, he's on my he's on my he's on my list to the White House. But that, my first mission was to meet Cruise Man. I had to meet Cruise Man first. Went to Kincaid's Hamburgers in Arlington. Had a good burger and got to know each other a little bit. And I was telling uh, Chris a little bit of my history, how I kind of got into all this. Um, not that anybody cares, but I guess I could share a little bit of my background as far as motorcycling. I started, I started riding motorcycles back when I was about 15. I started with mini bikes, back when the mini bikes were a craze back in the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Some of you may remember that. Mini bikes were the big deal. And I remember I wanted a mini bike so bad and my mom was not gonna have any of it. And we fought about it for at least a year. And then one day she picked me up from school and took me down to the local Honda dealer in Midland, Texas and got me a Honda Trail 70. And I'll tell you what, I, you, that's the happiest day of my life was the day I came home with that Honda Trail 70. And I, we rode that thing all up and down the alleys. We had alleys in Midland. And uh, couldn't ride on the street. I wasn't old enough, didn't have a license. We'd load it up in the trunk of the car and take it out to the caliche pits. We made a couple of buddies out there and we'd ride up and down the hills and climb hills with it and go on the trails. Man, I'll tell you what, those are some of the best memories I have uh, as a kid. A lot of fun. And I've, you know, once I got my license, I moved up to bigger bikes. And never got anything bigger than a Suzuki 550 at one point. And then, you know, I started working on my businesses and my career and kind of got out of riding when I was like, 22, 23, and didn't ride again until I was, hell, 2005. And I kind of got into the Harley scene, bought a Sportster 1200 Custom, and uh, my girlfriend was not really into it at first, but we went to a couple of Harley events and a couple of rides, and she kind of got into it. And then she rode a bike, she uh, bought a bike, started riding her own bike, got her a little Yamaha 250 to learn on. But I was so nervous, what, you know, when I ride with her, I was so nervous, worried about her that I couldn't enjoy the ride. So she started riding on the back of my Sportster. And we decided we wanted to do some touring, some long distance touring. And there's no way you're gonna do that on a Sportster with two up. So I started looking for a bigger bike and I, my, my natural uh, tendency was to look for a Harley, like a Harley Ultra or a Road King, something like that. And I, had, I was aware of Gold Wings, but you know, I was really into the Harley scene. So all the guys I was riding with were encouraging me to get a, a Ultra or a Road Glide or a Road King, something like that. But I used to go on eBay looking for bikes, and I found a 2005 Goldwing. Now this was in 2006, so it was still a new bike. And it only had 1,800 miles on it, so it was basically brand new. Actually, it was at a car dealership up in McKinney, Texas, just maybe 20 minutes from where I live. So I put a ridiculously low bid in on that Goldwing. It was bright yellow. It was the Big Bird Goldwing. I wasn't crazy about the color, but I figured I'm not going to get the bid anyway. Because I'm not going to win because I put in such a low bid. I, I can't even remember now how much the bid was, but it wasn't very much. 
and damned if I didn't win that bid. I woke up the next morning and I got an email or, you know, from eBay saying congratulations. And I thought, oh my God, am I really going to be riding a Honda Goldwing? And I was committed then. I had to buy it. So it was a level one. And I, I, as memory serves me, I think I only paid maybe $11,000 for it, maybe eleven, twelve thousand. dollars I mean, it was a heck of a bargain. It was a deal, even for back then, even for a level one, because it was brand new, 1,800 miles. Some guy bought it, didn't like it, took it and traded it in on a Suzuki car, a Suzuki car, remember those? So the next day, we drove up to that Suzuki dealership and it was sitting on the showroom floor and I looked it over and I mean it was spotless and uh, I got on it a little nervous because I'd never ridden a bike that big before I was coming off of a Sportster and those of you that know have ridden Sportsters you know that's a, that's a pretty small bike and I rode that thing home and I told Chris when we were at lunch I said as soon as I rode that bike home I knew that was it it was so smooth and so comfortable and so powerful and so easy to ride for a big bike. I had ridden a Harley Ultra and struggled riding it. It was so heavy and bulky and that front fairing being attached to the handlebars just really made it unwieldy. But this Goldwing, man, it was light as a feather and feet could easily touch the ground and I mean it was just smooth and quiet and I told my girlfriend when we got home I said you're not going to believe this you're going to love this thing this is how we're going to see the country and that was my start in the Goldwing world in 2006 probably about November of 2006 I'd only had my sports for about six or eight months when I got the Goldwing and I kept both bikes for a while thinking I would ride the Sportster around town and you know maybe go to the Harley meetings because I was pretty active I was the photographer in the Harley group you know I had the vest and the patch the whole thing and we had a big Harley group we'd go on a dinner ride on a Wednesday night and there'd be 50 guys show up it was a big group and I showed up one time on the Goldwing at a Harley it was a 4th of July function. Uh, we, we went to watch fireworks. And in the midst of all these black and chrome Harleys, here's this big sore thumb sticking out, this yellow gold wing. And I'm telling you, they were not amused. And they let me know on no uncertain terms that if I was going to continue to come to their functions, it would have to be on a Harley. And I was already I was pretty much ready to sell the Sportster anyway because I found myself never riding it. I was always riding the Goldwing, even around town. It was just as easy to ride as the Sportster, plus I had all the storage space. I could go to the grocery store. I could, you know, just, you know, pack stuff in it if I needed to, go anywhere I wanted. So I sold the Sportster, dropped out of the Harley group, became a Goldwing rider. And I bought a trailer. I bought a used Hannigan trailer from a guy in Oklahoma and we hooked it up and we did our first long trip. We went to the Grand Canyon and we rode from our house all the way to the Grand Canyon. Probably took us four or five days to get there. And I think we rode around, we went to Bryce and Zion and all over, all over Arizona, all over Utah. Just had a great time. It was a it was literally a life-changing experience. If you have not done a long road trip on a Goldwing, or any bike, I guess, but especially on the Goldwing, you don't know what you're missing. I mean, it is really a life-altering experience. And just the scenery and the, it just beautiful. It was just amazing. And we came back from that trip and I said, you know, if we're gonna keep doing this, which we plan to, I really need ABS brakes. I really needed a level three Goldwing because pulling a trailer, I felt like it was a little safer if I had ABS brakes. 
So I kept that bike not quite a year, and I, as soon as the 2007 models came out, I bought a 2007 Level 3 Goldwing. Had the GPS, even though it wasn't any good. I had the uh, ABS brakes, and boy, I started putting money into that bike. And we went all over the country on that 2007. We did Pacific Coast Highway, we did Yellowstone, we did, gosh, we went to uh, Deadwood, spent three or four days riding around South Dakota. We did another trip one year where we did 22 states in 21 days. Went up the East Coast and just unbelievable memories and tons of pictures and video. My girlfriend mostly sat on the back with the camera and did the video and the photos while I drove. And I bought a Bush Tech trailer for that bike, a matching orange trailer. And we would just go and stay in hotels. We'd probably do three, four, or 500 miles a day, depending on the location. Just had a great time. What a great way to see the country. I think there's still six or seven states that I haven't ridden in. And I'm um, gonna have to rectify that one of these days. We still haven't ridden in Florida. So that's on my bucket list. But anyway, Chris and I were talking about this, and I, well, I was boring him with my story. And uh, we just had a good lunch and a good meeting, and I got my Caliente seat cushion. And, and again, like I always say, thanks for subscribing to my channel. You know, I don't know if these stories bore the hell out of you or not, but gives me a chance to tell them anyway. Somebody out there might find it interesting. And uh, let's hear your story. You know, how did you get right? How did you get on the Goldwing? What was your Goldwing story? Put it in the comments down below this video. I find that stuff interesting. And you never know when we might meet up. I never knew. Two months ago, I had no idea I was ever going to meet Chris Caliente. And um, now it's done. So thanks for subscribing. Thanks for coming to my channel.